A very warm welcome from me, Rabab Zehra and TechX Media to all of you for today's webinar. Today's webinar's topic is Bridging the Digital Divide and IC2 Tools for Education. It is about the hot, trendy uh, topic of 21st century. If you are an educator or a learner or a parent, then this webinar is for you. If anyone of your, from your friends or family are unable to join us, please share the link with them so that everyone can take benefit from this 90 minute session about ICT tools for education. Uh, I would uh, request you all to keep yourself on mute to avoid any distractions. Uh, speaker of today's webinar is Dr. Yamala Kamaluddin. She is an amazing personality and uh, a lot is there uh, to say for her introduction, but uh, keeping the time limit in mind, I will just keep it brief. Dr. Vimala is an educator for 30 years and she is Doctor of Education from University of Sheffield in United Kingdom. She, currently, she is Lecturer of Mathematics and Information Technology at University of West Indies at St. Augustine. She has conducted extensive number of workshops on behalf of Ministry of Education at University of uh, West Indies over the years. She is also founder and honorary director of ITTPN Global, an organization which is creating teachers as innovators and students to be problem solvers by integrating technology in the classrooms. There is a lot more to say about her, but I will leave the rest to her. Uh, she can. I, I hope that she can say uh, a lot better than me. And um, she has joined us with her team today, uh, with her team of extremely highly professional people from educational background. They all are part of ITTPN uh, Global. Uh, the people who have joined from Dr. Memla's team with us are Ayan uh, Siprasad, Derek Huck. Hazra Baksh, Trisha Singh, Salma Hussain, and Rox. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you from TechX and from my side. Thank you so much for taking out time and joining us. Now I will pass on the spotlight to Dr. Vimala, but before that, some basic instru inst instructions like every webinar as usual. We, as I have told you that we are live on our official Facebook page and Facebook page link will be share, is already shared in the chat box. So you can uh, share that link in your friends. Otherwise you can share our Zoom link directly and people can join us directly for this webinar. Uh, after the session uh, from by Dr. Vimala, there will be a Q&A session where you can ask your questions. You can come on camera or you can ask your questions in the chat box. In between the webinar, if any questions come in your mind, you can ask those questions in the chat box. After the webinar, a feedback form link will be shared. Once you will fill that form, we will get your feedback and you will be eligible to get the participation certificate of this webinar. After this webinar is recorded and after this, the recorded video will be available, available on TechX YouTube channel. And for all the participants, the video will be shared, a video link will be shared uh, uh, with them uh, via email. Uh, so that is all for now. Uh, over to you, Vimala. Thank you so much, Rabab. It is, I'm thrilled to be here and to have and to accept your invitation to be on your platform. So representing ITTPN Global, a group of astute professionals with tons of knowledge and experiences in ICT, we are all here in a collaborative effort to bring you a session on bridging the Bridging the Digital Gap, ICT Tools for 21st Century Education. I just want to make sure that you can see my screen here as I open up. So I bring you greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wherever you are in the world, as Rabab said, I am Vimala. And if it's one thing COVID-19 has taught us, it is 
we must be tech savvy. So wherever you are on this whole spectrum of using ICT for whatever you do, whether you are a technologist, an educator, a student, a parent, or just hanging and laying low, wondering what this is all about, we invite you to spend the next time with us. And we know that you are somewhere in this world, somewhere, but we bring you greetings from the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. ITPN Global is born here in the Southern Caribbean. And for those of you who know, home of Brian Lara. Okay, so again, uh, Rabab mentioned those names so wonderfully, which is a team, but let me show you their pictures so that you will, you know, look for them in the chat and in, uh, as they present throughout this afternoon. Derek, Ian, Salma, Hazra, Dipnarain, and Trisha all work with me very closely to make this happen. So what we hope that you get by the end of this session is that you are able to identify the 21st century learning skills, what we are calling the four C's, become aware of ICT tools to enable teaching and learning of these skills. And we have several examples of tools throughout the session begin to appreciate the diversity of learning in technology-mediated environments and how assistive technology can help you, and begin to think about your plans to embrace or enhance these very skills in your classroom, whether it's virtual or in person. So our structure for today is this. I will pass you over to Roxanne and Derek, who will give you an overview of the 21st century skills. And then we'll take you to Ian and Salma, who will delve more into communication, then an adventure with Hazra in creativity, then to get your brains thinking with Dipmarine on critical thinking. We will go on then to Trisha with collaboration, and then back to me to close it all up and for me to take all your questions and your comments. So. Without further ado, get your java, your kava, your tea, your water, kick back, focus, engage with us for the next 90 minutes as we bring you our 21st century learning skills. Over to you, Roxanne and Derek. Hi everyone. So happy you're here today. We'd just like you to take one minute, share a little bit about yourself and give us an idea of your mindset. So I'm going to share with you a link, to a poll in the chat. So find your Zoom chat. It's the very last link posted there. Click on it and just participate in the short poll. All right, so welcome everyone. So Roxanne and I have been teaching for quite a number of years. So Roxanne, I'm not sure if you want to, to say how many years. This, I'm celebrating my, my 21st year as an educator this year. Um, and 15 for me. <laughs> 15 for you, there you go. So we, we, I mean, we could all appreciate that um, facilitating a session with an audience that we're unfamiliar with is a bit of a challenge and we really want to speak to to your needs we want to be able to provide you the kind of support that that you would like for your particular teaching and learning context um, so that's kind of why we we provided you this link so that as you get to know us we can get to know you as well and your specific scenario your specific situation because every teaching situation is different every teaching and learning situation is different um, the way i teach and my students and my context and my classroom is much different from yours so this is kind of a one way of us getting to know one another uh, right now i'm teaching and studying at virginia tech um, i'm teaching basically uh, second year university course. Roxanne, what about you? Okay, so I, I, I teach adults computer literacy and I also teach at a secondary school. So we're looking at, at students from the ages probably around 11 to maybe 17, 18 average there. So it's quite a mix to me in terms of ages. Um, right. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember I tried teaching uh, at early form one so i think it was like 11 to 12 year olds that's very very different from teaching adults 
I, I, I found it to be a very um, eye-opening experience. So definitely we want to know, you know, your specific situation so that we can, you know, learn to appreciate exactly what um, your circumstances are. Um, by the way, everyone, Derek was once my lecturer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I many, still call him so to this day. So. <laughs> she does. It's really weird. <laughs> yes. But that was many, many years ago. Not sure yes. why she's still calling me sir. <laughs> awesome. How are those? Um, how is the poll coming along, Roxanne? Sorry? How is the poll coming along? Everybody seems we are getting a few they comments have, saying that they're done. They have about 10 seconds left, so I'd really appreciate. We have about 19 participants so far. So can we try and finish up the poll, everyone? I'm sending the link again. It will only take you 60 seconds. Yep, we, we really want to couch the way we phrase things and the examples that we use to really to, to, to meet your needs. Um, Hazra, for example, teaches primary school. Uh, Dr. Kamala Dean has taught secondary and done uh, academic administration and research uh, spanning the, the spectrum, primary mm -hmm. up to tertiary. Um, Ian and Dip also secondary with some experience in adult education as well. Uh, Salma as well. We, all of us have kind of a, a broad variety of experiences and we definitely really want to, to meet you where you are at. Okay, so let's take a look at how do we feel today? All right, so well, that's good to hear that most of us are, you know, good to awesome. That's, that's always good. Um, it's afternoon where most of you are, I believe. Right now it's, it's morning for us. Um, I'm good, glad to see nobody is in a bad position today it seems to be all generally okay so that's good to hear where in the world are you so we have a big uh, contingent from the philippines that's awesome so i know that the philippines has you know very unique uh, educational uh, circumstances in fact we we i think dr kamali you spend some time in the philippines I'm not really <laughs> no but, <laughs> but, but i always we Right. We sent a team from Trinidad to the Philippines to spend some time with your, your educators some years right. back. So yeah. we, we learned a lot from you, you all. All right. So it's, it's good that we're seeing some, some from Trinidad, some from uh, United Arab Emirates and Asia. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. So do you like technology? Do you like to use technology in classrooms? So most of us, yes. A few of us, not so much. And for those of us who like it, we, we do want to hear some more about why you like it. Yeah. And definitely for those who don't like it, we want to know why that I'm is. I'm very and curious myself. Very curious. <laughs> there are many reasons for that. And I mean, I can tell you, I've been in technology for pretty much all of my adult life. And I, I do hate it at times. I can tell you it, it, it can get overwhelming. I think COVID-19 kind of made us say, okay, enough is enough. Enough you know, is like enough. We've done it, but then so much of it, I think exactly. that's what happened. But, um, but yet in the classroom, there is a reality because of online, right? We have to be able to always be bringing it, you know, always be working different tools, making it interesting, mixing it up. And so that's why today, um, we're hoping that, you know, you, might, you probably are familiar with some of what we have, but then maybe some of it is new. And then you're going to say, wow, okay, let me see how I can use that in my own classroom or my own situation. And even if it's Rabab, uh, uh, even if it's a non-formal classroom situation, every office is really a working learning environment anyways. So we're hoping whatever we have uh, today is applicable whichever environment, learning environment you are in. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we have 78% students and uh, we have a fair portion being teachers and administrators. So, and you know, all of us as educators or in the education space, all of us are learners at the end of the day. So all of us can benefit in some way by, by you know, participating in sessions such as this awesome session hosted by TechX. So, so definitely welcome. So one of the things that we were really interested in uh, is what are the main challenges that you face within your space? Because my challenges are different from your challenges. So I'm glad you were able to share so much with us about that. So some of us 
suffer from poor emotional mental health circumstances, perhaps because we're stuck indoors, we're online all of the time. A lot of our routines, the face-to-face routines that we've typically had and leveraged, we may no longer have that available to us. I know as an educator myself, I connect being in a classroom with my students, you know, seeing their nonverbal cues is a great part of me helping them learn and helping me know how to teach them and with moving to online i've lost that so i know that with everything else that is also impacting upon my my ability to teach and my my mental health and my emotional health and my motivation to a great extent Uh, i expected expected a a huge uh burnout percentage and i'm not seeing that but a lot of teachers here in trinidad is expect is experience in that you know being on the computers all the time using all the various devices sometimes when teachers aren't working they feel they should be working yeah. you know so I'm, I'm impressed to see that that's not really so much a challenge with all of our participants definitely Rox what would you say would be our biggest challenge in, in Trinidad or a top that's two it. maybe it's, it's the adjustment just you know for us we we had to go online I mean I was online before with my students prior to COVID but we have a a lot of teachers here in Trinidad that just was not using any sort of teaching platforms or ICT tools as much as we have learned them here they weren't really um, encouraged to use them so they had to be using them very quickly though but in a way um hurried or forced to do so and just the overwhelming right. change and the adjustment was huge for some of our teachers actually a great deal of our teachers all right yeah. adjustment maybe was huge. Perhaps maybe in the uae for example i think they were pretty mm-hmm. much on board with this whole online and as chris was yes. already telling us that you all are online pretty much all the time. So we know that you would have been, you would be experimenters in your classroom as well, and that you are uh, still, but we are all learners and we're still wanting to know, well, what's out there and what's happening in different parts of the world. So that's wonderful. So maybe we can go on um, if we have enough for the poll, even though they can continue perhaps, even as you're getting into it, they can continue uh, feeding into that if they haven't yet done that, but we can probably run on. Yeah, so one of the things that is a challenge to us, um, it seems to be similar, is the limited resources. So that, I would say, would be our, our second biggest challenge. So hopefully we'll be able to speak to you guys about things that perhaps could help you, things that work for us. Uh, when you hear 21st century skills, what word pops into mind? Technology, using all virtual tools, critical thinking, nice, learning, innovation, some awesome words. So I'm, I'm glad that those things are the surface. Um, digital skills, email, advanced skills and motivating, exciting. That is awesome. That's, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad that we are, some of us even moving into some of the more techie areas, e-learning apps, right? Um, great. And so, yeah, we are hoping here that we will, through the various sessions that we host, um, be able to provide you something new that you can leverage in your classroom. So let's quickly move into uh, our introduction. So Roxanne, I'm gonna just move quickly into our 4C introduction. Okay, so let's see here now. Awesome, so throughout this session, we're gonna be talking about these 4Cs. My colleagues are gonna explore in a little more detail, each of the different areas of the four C's, and they're gonna to touch on various technologies that they use and they've found success with, uh, with respect to trying to, to enact or embody or, or support the four C's within their teaching and learning scenario, right? So obviously in terms of the four C's of 21st century learning, there are many different things in 21st century. These are some of the top ones. Communication is important. How do we communicate not only what we want our students to do, which is an important thing, but how generally do we help them, help learners learn how to organize their thoughts, organize their ideas and communicate those ideas 
with others. And those could be anything. It could be a proposal on a project that they would like to get involved in, a problem that they're trying to solve, a strategy that they've adopted to solving the problem and the reason they adopted that strategy. All of this, we, we need to kind of help them learn how to do effectively. And this includes communication through speaking, hearing, and writing. So we're gonna explore a little bit more about that as the session progresses. Following that, we're going to talk about creativity. We've always heard about thinking outside of the box, dealing with problems that perhaps we are unfamiliar with, new situations, new circumstances, and being creative and innovative within that space. And all of that involves, you know, these higher order thinking skills of analysis, synthesis, adaptability, and so on. So we want to see how can we help our learners be creative? What exactly does creativity look like? How does it manifest and how can we encourage and promote that within our teaching and learning scenario? Critical thinking is obviously also very important. And again, it comes down to how do we help our learners analyze problems that they face, whether that's you know, complex theoretical problems or real world problems. How do they come up with a viable solution to an unstructured problem? How do they use what they know, what they've learned, what they've experienced? How do they build upon what others have done before in order to kind of, you know, approach solving a particular problem? And how do they use evidence and reasoning to kind of guide their, their solution design? And then finally, we'll talk about collaboration. And we know that collaboration is very important. I myself, I don't feel like I'm a creative teacher at times. And through collaboration with stakeholders like ITTPN, through TechX, I've learned a lot just as we do these sessions. And we hope that you learn something. We learn from you as well. So through these collaborative efforts with other learners, other stakeholders, other subject matter experts, we can all benefit by growing as educators and as learners, all right? Um, this is just one example of four C's in action. So this is a project straight from Dubai um, that we have a tech student who created an artificial intelligence system. And this student actually created this system so that people, anybody can use it to help detect skin cancer early by providing the system with certain pieces of information that will use, you know, intelligence systems in the background and databases and machine learning and a few other things, all those buzzwords, it will use that to kind of um, analyze the symptoms and determine if someone is likely to, to have skin cancer. Being a tech person, this student would obviously had to have been creative, collaborative with subject matter experts, medical experts, researchers, a few other people. They would have had to communicate what their intentions are and they would have had to work with these stakeholders to figure out, well, what's the best way to innovate within this space, right? So this is just one example because this is obviously a huge problem that, that the world faces. And in working together with people who can, you know, support each aspect of the project, the tech, the medical, the research, the education, stakeholder, the patient itself, or someone who's afflicted with the disease, you know, in working together, we could come up with awesome things, right? So that's just a highlight of where we're going to take this presentation. So we're going to move into the first part of it with Ian and Selma. All right. So thanks so much, Derek and Roxanne. We really engaged with each other and had those amazing results from that poll. Thanks so much for taking part because that helps us to get to know you just a little bit better. So there we had it, the 21st century, four C's of 21st century learning skills. And we're gonna delve into the first one, communication. And to get that going, we're going to have Ian and Salma take you through that for the next few minutes. Over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Dr. K. It's Great. actually, it's actually and good afternoon. afternoon. And good afternoon. Good night in the Philippines, I believe. It's my time there. Right. We so, will, we'll be discussing today communication and how important communication is and the, the, the important role it actually plays in our daily job 
in no matter what we do. Right? What we're going through this morning is our checklist. So at the end of this session, one, you'll be able to categorize um, communication. And two, we'll explore the assistive part of communication. Right? Now, remember? please remember that communication is the foundation skill for all the other seats. So here we have a small visual cartoon. We want, we'd like to get some feedback, some thoughts. What are your thoughts on this? What are, what are your takeaways? What do you see? What do you interpret by this cartoon? You can use the chat box or you can mute your mic and have a say. We want the, we want the discussion. We want to know what you think, how you view this. How is, it, how is this interpreted? So did anyone find the irony in this? Or do you find this as offensive? Yeah, so we getting any feedback, Ian, if you're- if No, you're I'm not seeing chat lighting up. Um, I'm not seeing any feedback from anyone. What are your thoughts on the cartoon? You agree with what was said? You don't agree? We need some communication. I can start, I, I can say that from the time I saw this, I kind of got like, eh, you know, I kind of like, what are they trying to communicate? What are they saying? So I see vegan burgers there or vegan. And then I see the beefing up and I'm thinking maybe some people might feel, you know, um, not comfortable with this particular cartoon and what it's trying to depict. I don't know, what do you all think? Yeah, it could be quite offensive to many people. I agree. Right, so this is just an example of what we're calling miscommunication because this could be phrased differently so that the point is is got um is given, but without being offensive to any any person or any of their teeth, right? Maybe it depends so, on the person. Some will get offended and some will get confused. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Correct, because yeah, yeah, it's vegan burgers, but then you are using the term beefing up. So again, it can be misconstrued. And this is a very important part of communication, how we speak. What we may say, okay, beefing up and using those terms may not be um, the correct term to use when you are around certain colleagues and so on. Right? Go ahead, Salma. And I think okay. Chris is saying, I think Chris is saying that um, the messaging is contradictory too. And you know, the group that who's here with us that we're here working with is TechX Media, who's who is on that, I guess, is communication. So so happy to have that kind of you know feedback from you all. Yeah, so let's let's look at exactly what, what are the forms of communication. Um Salma, your screen, please. Oh, you're not you're not seeing it? No. So this Right, is that better? different forms of communication and how do you communicate with your stakeholders so for example teachers and students how do they communicate most of most of the time now we're on an online environment and we tend to use those social media as form of communication so we're going to look at the categories of communication now and there are four main types verbal which we are all accustomed to um, speech. We have the nonverbal, for example, body language and listening. A lot of persons may not think that listening is a nonverbal um, skill, but it is. We have written emails, uh, letters for the written part, and visual, we have sights and gestures. So now we look at the platforms that we may use. 
again, remember, okay, in our country, in Trinidad and Tobago, for example, our schools are out. We only have students coming in for due to practical sessions, and a lot of our classes now are online. So we have the problem of actually getting over the, the how do we verbal and how do we communicate with our students, our colleagues have meetings and so on. So where you will actually think that email, blogs, podcasts, using Microsoft Teams, using Skype, WhatsApp video calls, Google Meetings, all these things are different arrays. And sometimes, sometimes we have to look at the child and examine if they are being bombarded by too many different ways of communication. Because if you have one teacher using one method and the next and the staff is using one method, it becomes a communication overload. It switch between those different platforms, a reality that hurts both students as well as educators and our colleagues having to switch. Next slide, Sal. Okay, and we're looking here at the non-verbal and the visual. As I said, we have the body language. So when we stand, we fold our arms, for example, these are these are examples of our body language when we're speaking to persons. Or gestures, you know, sometimes you might say peace out, you make a peace sign or a thumbs up. So in the nonverbal, there's a platform, an LMS platform called Edmodo that has what we call a wellness pool. And it's um, anonymous feedback so students can feel, you know, free just to gauge exactly um, how they're feeling. Similar to what Roxanne and Derek had done this morning. Right. Or using the Zoom reaction. So you, you guys could raise your hands, you can give a clap, etc. Next slide. Yeah. So great. Yeah. We have an activity for you guys to do now. Or a game. So we want to see in um, the fastest time how many of you can figure out these gestures. By the way, are you all understanding our accents? Are we coming across talking too fast? Any feedback would be nice on that. I hope so because we as Trinidadians tend to speak a little fast in our English. Okay, thank you very much, um, David. Right, so what are your takeaway on expressions? Now, expressions are a very key part of communication because for you to actually pick up on body language and facial expressions will help you dealing with your colleagues, dealing with friends, a person you meet, and even your students. Your face is your first um, giveaway. Some people practice what you call a poker face, but in the end, you always have telltale signs. A person can have a reaction to you. So let's look at what you are looking at. Let us identify what you think it is, and we'll give you the answer in the next slide. Anybody got any correct? Did you check chat, Ian? Yes, we are getting some. We have um, Sandeep. We have Leah, who's actually getting some. A lot, a lot of them are getting it right. Okay, excellent. So let's see okay. how many of you got all six. Right, so you see that number, you see that number four? four. Yeah. yeah, number four would be the shocker, the disgust. Oh. <laughs> right? A lot Look of people face. may not pick up, they'll pick it up as sadness or, no, I don't understand what is taking place. I, I am confused. But it's really disgust. And we need to be able to understand the facial expressions of the persons we are interacting with. Now, again, Communication is really a holistic approach, right? From language, how you speak, everything. Your face, how you stand, everything. The emotions you use. And again, our students are going to use a lot of emoticons and emojis. And let us get the feedback. Let us know how our colleagues are working. Okay, next slide, Sal. Thank you. So now we're, we're going we're gonna to have a little fun here. How many of us this particular cartoon depicts. So we have we have little Hassan here and he is <laughs> saying that he doesn't enjoy taking online notes because you know 
a lot of uh, health problems. His back is sore, his eyes burn. So he's excited to relax. Now what happens? Guess where he's going? He decides to go for a movie. But however, in as much as a movie experience, same visual, is exciting, he wishes his class was a little more exciting. How many of us could relate to that? Right, very good. I see a lot of a lot of people like up the chat. Very good. Yes, shock, sad, angry, happy, afraid. Hassan is from every country, you know. We have a Hassan by us in and um in Trinidad, and, <laughs> right? My good friend actually name is Hassan. Right. Yeah, and again, it's, it's a very common name. <laughs> yeah, and one person used the correct, correct term. They said tech burnout. And that, and like I said, I keep harping on it. It's a reality everyone is facing, especially when you have to switch between different platforms. Right? So again, you see this thing called typing. A lot of students, you'll say we have to type, we have to type. Use the dictation. We're going to learn about it. Next slide. Next slide, Sam. Exactly. We're going, We're going to give you some little tips and tricks on how to, you know, beat these burnouts. So we, we're taking a look at the assistive technology and how we can enhance communication through this. And this is mainly used mean by everyone. Okay, so we're looking at the seeing, the hearing, and the speaking. So did you know your computers or your smartphones have abilities to basically speak to you, right? So we have, um, for the seeing part, we have magnifying or display, all right? We have narrator as well. And we're gonna look at the hearing as well. So in hearing, we can use what we call closed caption. So some of you might be using a YouTube video and you might have the closed caption on because you don't want, you know, um, the audio and maybe it, you don't want your teacher to know you're, you're looking at a video, right? So we have the closed caption setting that can be applied. And we're going to look at how we can utilize this feature as well um, using any productivity tool. So let's take a look at this. In this video, we are going to show you how you can use closed captioning to assist with your PowerPoint presentation. So the first thing we need to do is we can click on Always Use Subtitles. I can position the subtitles any place that I would like. I can also choose the language. So I can put it to English or I can put it to Arabic. Let's see what this looks like. So what are the four C's? The four C's basically refers to communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Right, so as you can see that there were closed caption in place while the speaker was, was speaking. And in addition to the hearing, we have technology in our smart devices where we can use the accessibility feature in our smartphone. So for example, in your iPhones, um, you can put on the lights so you can be notified when a message is coming in or maybe when your phone is ringing. Right, and um, again, you all are using smart devices, iPhones and whatever. And because of that, you see, I'm, I'm guilty. I left my song check on, right? Um, we are using smart devices. And because of that, we have translators built in. Those who have the new iPhones, you have the translator are built in that will give you speech to text immediately. And so on, you see? I still didn't put my phone on silent, right? <laughs> right, so so, yeah, here we can talk instead of typing. So remember little Hassan and he was complaining about his notes. Well, he can use the dictation feature in Google Docs to help him type. Um, and as well as we have uh, assistants, virtual assistants like Cortana, Siri, Alexa, that you can give voice commands to and they will be able to perform whatever task you assign to them. Okay, and as we leave, we're going to look at a nice phrase. So Ian, you want to take this one? Sure. Oh, communication, the human connection is a key to personal and career success. 
please remember at all times, your body language, your tone, the way you carry about yourself, even your dress says a lot about you. And a person will judge you by all those categories. And you need, like our cartoon, watch what you say, watch those tech burnout. Um, Infinity Note 7, you are a wonderful point. It's not tech burnout. <laughs> Lovely point. Right? Thank you. And now hand over back to the <laughs> Okay, we going? thank you so much, Ian and Salma. Wow, what a punch in that 10 minutes that you had there. Such visuals. I hope that you uh, see what we try to do is to have you engage with not just the talking and the reading, but a lot of the visuals. Those cartoons were actually created by our team here and uh, created just for you to get a sense of how we can mix it up in terms of our modes of communication in, uh, in our sessions. But uh, Ra Rabab, I wanted to ask you, and I know that you are in media and media is all about communication, right? How do you address this nonverbal uh, cues in this whole online environment? Because we find that that's a big deal, especially in a classroom, especially when people have their screens shut off and people have their screens um, uh, or they have their mics off or they have it on and they're doing something else. How do you deal with that? Um, and uh, like, uh, I hope uh, what I understand is you're talking about the online events that how uh, do we communicate during the online events, right? So in, uh, in those kind of events, we use different modes of communication. Uh, to keep the events more happening, we keep activities in between the events. Written communication is there. Verbal communication is there. So these are the modes of communication which we use normally. All right. So how do we pick up on the non-verbal now when they don't speak? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more difficult, right? It's a little more difficult. But you know what? I'm happy that I'm seeing your wonderful face. And we are happy that so many of the people here are sharing with us through the chat through the conversation and through it. So one in particularly important point we wanted to talk about as well was that last point we raised with the closed caption, which can really help those who have some re listen hearing difficulties because so many among us actually, and we don't know, it's subtle. We may have slight hearing difficulties, slight vision difficulties, and assistive technologies of our phones, our devices can help anyone to enlarge and enliven the experience. So that's a little bit on 1C communication, Rabab, and we're going on to another C. So we pass you over now to Hazra, a primary school teacher, and she is going to explore creativity in learners through CISO. Hazra? Thank you, Dr. K. Welcome, everyone. I am Hazra Baksh, and I've been a teacher in the primary school or equivalent the elementary education system in Trinidad and Tobago for 29 years. It's a pleasure to be with you as we continue our theme of 21st century skills. As we just spoke, we learned about communication skills, and I definitely have to fine tune my communi visual communication skills because I'm going to be looking for some feedback from you. Okay, so... At this point, we'll be exploring creativity in learners through the lens of CISO. Did you know that all of the presenters today hail from Trinidad and Tobago, a place known for its annual carnival celebrations with spectacular colorful costumes and exuberant festivities? Here we have one of our famous mass men and artist, Trinidad, Peter Minchel, and his iconic masterpieces, Tantan and Saga Boy. Two 16 foot tall dancing puppets that he designed to con be controlled by the masquerader, each wearing their costumes. The movement and Tantan and Saga Boy are a great expression of the blend of creativity and culture as Trinidadians. So we have already explored the first C, communication. Now we will examine our second C, creativity. So can you share with me what it means to be creative? Can I see anything in a chat feature?
Would anybody be willing to share some audio? Anyone who would like to come on camera and uh, talk about what does it mean to be creativity, please raise your hand and we will allow you to speak. Thank you for that, Rabab. I really need that assistance. Uh, Chris and Hina, please keep an eye. If anyone is raising hand, we will uh, let them uh, unmute themselves. What does it mean to be creative? Do you think of yourself as a creative individual? Whether many, you are comments, many comments in the chat. Would you like me to read some for you? Thank you, Roxanne. Okay. Taken out of the box, imagination, designing something new. Absolutely right. Cognition. Yes. We want to stop. We have lots. Making things based on imagination and ideas. Thank you very much. That's exactly it. Doing something differently in a unique way, yet interesting. To Thank share you, ideas. Roxanne. Oh, should Thanks. I stop? <laughs> yes, okay. stop. Thanks a lot. What is stop. creativity? Howard Gardner has described it as the ability to solve problems, fashion products, and raise new questions. The original products can be a thought, a word, action, and must be effective. But if we use Gardner's understanding that creative products are original and effective, then we must ask, are children creative? Must a young learner create something which is original and of value in, in order for it to be identified as it being creative? Are young children capable of always creating original thought? Do you think young learners are creative if their product uses elements of imagination? Dr. Russ clarifies that creativity is synthesizing in an original way using fantasy. Pretend play becomes the vehicle for creative expression. Play provides an opportunity for a child to generate new ideas. Play then becomes the creative product. Now, I would like you to share in the chat, and Roxanne, I need your assistance again, thank you. How is creativity supported in your classroom in light of Dr. Ross's explanation that pretend play is very critical? So the question is for audience that how the creativity is supported in their classrooms. Even um, you can tell about the days when you were students. If anyone is still a student, you can share your experience or you can share your experience from the days when you were students. That how you used to do creative activities in your classrooms. Whether All right, so we, we have a thinking skill. It is something perceived by creators, ideas which may lead for a better output. Um, giving us the opportunity to improve ourselves and push our limits. Yes. Very good. And now we're going to explore, explore how we can use Seesaw to nurture creativity in our young learners. Can I get some feedback? How many of you are familiar with Seesaw? Can I get see some uh, emojis? Yes, if anyone is familiar with Seesaw, please share if you know about it. Rox, once again, if you can just give me an idea. Um, someone, um, someone would like to be un unmuted. That's um, Shadi Dawi. Yes, um, uh, Chris or Hannah, please unmute Shadi Dawi. Shadi Dawi. Hi, Shadi. Hello. Hi. First of all, uh, a great initiative, and I'm happy to be among all of you. And Vimala, uh, it's a great, great pleasure to co cooperate with you. And hopefully, it's not uh, uh, the last time we will definitely cooperate and work together. Uh, my point is, it's not about CISO, it's about uh, your question, the creativity in classrooms. And uh, 
I have I have seen and explored this with my daughter, and when especially post COVID, when uh, uh, most of the schools they started remote learning and uh, uh, studying from home, uh, um, it has uh, it was not a, a decision; it was a must. Um, of course, me personally, I'm, I'm against uh, learning, uh, remote learning, and I have many reasons for this, but that's not now probably uh, <laughs> the time to discuss this because, uh, but I can, I'm going to list a couple of uh, challenges if, uh, uh, if it can be in a way, uh, it can create a debate or a discussion. First of all, let me say it is, I think the teacher, uh, it is difficult for him. It, it, he needs or it requires a certain skills to control the number. I don't know, there should be a limitation. And that was one of the things I discussed with the school management, uh, that for, for an online class, there should be a limitation for the student's number. You cannot have 40 for zero, for example, a student or 30 uh, in, in one classroom. Uh, this will create a challenge for the teacher. This is number one. Number two, since you spoke also about uh, nonverbal and verbal communication, uh, I'm not sure to 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 which extent the uh, verbal nonverbal communication relays, and it is based on uh, I think feelings. On when you look to someone who is sitting in front of you, uh, where really you can uh, we call it vibes, or you can look at his face, or you know uh, look at his expressions. I'm not sure when someone like us now, we are, uh, everybody is in a different country. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure to, to which extent we can really uh, feel that, for example, Vimala, now Vimala is doing like this, nodding your head. So I can yeah, feel that. that and and thumbs. <laughs> yes, but maybe uh, Hazra is not. And I think uh, uh, maybe Rabab is, is busy or uh, let's say Hina is looking. So, mm -hmm. Uh, it is it is somehow yeah. uh, really difficult to uh, to be able to uh, assess how people are reacting. Are they with us? Are they in the well, for a while uh, on the on the other side? If we are in a class, um, you know, we know the the teacher is he can see uh, each and every student and he can uh, uh, interact and he can see their emotion. The other thing is, uh, I think this is one of the most critical challenges. Um, allocating proper time to each and every student is also a challenge. Uh, yes. Some students will probably, I don't know, some teachers, I don't want to say they are, they have, <laughs> they have uh, bias or preferences for right. other students, but this happens, I think, uh, maybe by, uh, they feel comfortable with one student. I've realized like with my daughter, uh, um, she was in grade one, uh, I had always an issue with the teacher. She doesn't give her time, much time. Uh, even though we write in the comment and please one question and mm -hmm. she was allocating or giving time for selected two or three girls or students. Uh, probably they are, I don't know, uh, uh, more, they have they have a, a charisma, a chemistry or they, they are smart. I, I don't wanna, assess and judge, but this is something also very challenging. Uh, yeah. You have to be very well, I don't know, uh, uh, organized, structured, or properly, mm -hmm. you put a stopwatch next to you, so uh, you, you allocate the, the proper time for each and every student. The yeah. four- I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's technology. It's a struggle these days for all the parents to cope up with remote learning because people were not used to of it before. Yes, yeah. Dr. Shadi, I, I really understand what you're saying as a parent and as a teacher, I feel it too. We've all been thrown in this situation and it's a learning experience for us all. Um, I think teachers throughout the world are struggling with it. Some are coping better than others. I myself have invested in two screens and right now I have two screens in front of me and my cell phone so I can see you. You know, we just have to make the little extra effort so that we can give our best to our, all our participants. Uh, my students in my class, I consciously try to choose everybody, call upon everybody, give everybody a, a listening chance to, to, to be able to share and express how they feel. But it is a challenge. And I'm sorry that you feel that your daughter is in that situation. I would like to think that all teachers throughout the world are trying. 
are really, really trying. And opportunities like this is a moment for us to learn and to benefit. You know, I don't know if Dr. Vilmalo wants to add anything to that. Yeah. I want to, uh, actually, there was a fourth point, sorry. Right, right, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, doctor, because... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. No, that's fine. You're sharing from the ground as a parent, so that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, my, my last uh, uh, concern or comment or outline, whatever you want to call it, is technology. Uh, technology is very challenging uh, also in this part. It plays a big role. I don't know. Uh, sometimes we have issues with internet speed. Sometimes yeah. we have issues with the, with the picture motion. Sometimes we have issues with uh, clarity. For example, also this is what I have seen. The teacher, when, when she's explaining and talking, she can't also, we have to be fair and, and realistic. Probably she can't pay attention to 20 students and they're like, for us now we are, I mean, I don't know, I think we are 50 or 60. Uh, having, uh, I don't know to which extent teacher is able to really make sure that each one of the students is really attentive and looking and uh, he didn't put mute or uh, he didn't put, uh, I don't know, stop the video. Uh, even if he stops the video, uh, the, the, so the unmute also is, is usually sometimes a challenge, you know, I understand teachers ca cannot allow the students because they make noise, especially in classes like grade one, KG2, whatever. Uh, so they have to unmute. So probably also on the other side, the parents of the student, uh, like there is no other option but, but to send a chat. If you unmute me now, I have to send on the chat, please, I need to talk. Uh, so... Uh, so, Shadi, you raised you raised all the key issues here. That yeah. this, this this what we call the abrupt move into remote learning has has found parents, students, and teachers alike. Nobody kind of predicted this because everybody thought, "Oh, I'll sail into online when I want," but not that you had to use it. And you're really bringing out what we hope by the end of this webinar to to touch on. Um, in terms of the four C's, because we are focused on learning outcomes for the children. We are focused on making their experience, even though it's not an in-person school, that it is focused on improving them to function in the real world, because that's ultimately what we want to do. We want to grow and nurture our children to perform. So our focus on the four C's is exactly that. But I also want to tell you that examining the role of emotions online has been in the research and in the literature since about 20 years ago. And they haven't gotten it right. There is still not enough research on how do we, uh, what can we say, call these emotions, grow these emotions and express these emotions um, in a safe way online. And mm -hmm. teachers, I, I know you're a parent, but here's what. We're so happy that there are teachers and students and parents here so that this opportunity that TechX Media has brought on is to help all the teachers, the same your, your daughter's teacher, if, yes. if she were here, I mean, if not, it's not too late to still, you know, tell her to jump in, right? Tell her to say, hey, this amazing thing is happening that you can help. What's your daughter's name? Um, what's your daughter's name? Uh, I, Noor, uh, Noor. Noor and, and Shahrazad. The, the old, right. and Noor six years. But I'll tell you, uh, Dr. Vimala, uh, another thing you just mentioned, it. Uh, the, the, the happening, uh, the efficiency of learning, which is also something really uh, very critical, especially for low grade classes. Yes. Okay, I mean, like for, for classes like grade eight, grade nine, Probably the student have accumulated knowledge, or let me say he 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 is in a in a, uh, in a certain position and and men mentally he can uh, seek uh, assistance. He can do. But when when we talk about uh, uh, KG two, grade one, grade two, same what I explored with my daughter. The thing is online. I'm not sure, especially when they do the test. And you, we all know the parents are always uh, near the the children. So. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but I, I, for example, my experience, my daughter in grade one, probably roughly approximately did not learn more than 30%, 40% right. of what she was supposed to learn. Yes, yes. My, uh, there is something called learning loss that is happening. It's, it's officially called learning loss. 
a whole concept of what uh, where students are supposed to be, but what they didn't get because of the whole online learning. You know, as you're talking, I think it's raising a great question, a great opportunity for Rabab. Maybe we can do this or similar as a professional development workshop for teachers, because I think you are highlighting here as a parent that the teachers really don't know how to harness these skills. And we believe it's not about a tool. We believe it's about leveraging the tools to maximize the learning because we are concerned about this learning loss. And I, what we want to do, thanks so much for that sharing. And we'll, I'll talk with Rabab and Chris and so on later on. Maybe we'll do something very focused for teachers and help them with that. Because let's face it, they are trying to, but they just don't know. And we want to share our experiences and the skills that we have gotten with them. So we'll talk about that afterwards. So I want to take you back to Hazra, who's going to show you a little bit more on how she was able to get these little ones to do some creative work with Seesaw. Hazra, back to you. Thank you, Dr. K. I have been using Seesaw in my classroom. I balance Seesaw together with Zoom. Zoom helps me with the synchronous and I use Seesaw with the synchronous as well as the asynchronous. I definitely hope that Seesaw is the platform for me that's helping me reach out to each and every student that they give their particular feedback. I get a stronger connection and ties with my students through CISO than uh, that it will strengthen what happens with my synchronous class in Zoom. So I'm going to share with you now some snippets of CISO. What is CISO for those of you who may not be familiar with CISO? CISO is the elementary equivalent to Google Classroom. It's a fabulous introduction to an online learning platform, ideal for young learners to become familiar with technology. CISO can be used for blended learning, remote teaching, or online learning. In fact, CISO has been used way before the pandemic. CISO promotes learning as it allows teachers to create and allocate assignments in the, with the option to add voice instructions, upload videos from YouTube, and share worked example by the teacher. Meaningful student engagement is captured in this digital portfolio tool which allows learners to use the built-in creative tools to draw pictures, take photos and draw on them, or record their voice on the screen, upload videos, import material from other apps, use fantasy and imagination, all to be able to express themselves creatively and solve problems. Here I have- And here we have an example of how a student used the activity that was assigned in Seesaw to develop a creative piece. The challenge was to represent my trip to Mars. The students had the option to choose any of the creative tools available in Seesaw after they've watched a video on Mars. They were supposed to share information of what they've learned. Calling from Kennedy Space Center, astronaut Meridian. Are you ready? Copy. Kennedy, Space Center, mission to the International Space Station for observation of planet Mars is a good. Mars is in sight getting ready to land on the International Space Station. Which, but they'll actually pose a water here on Mars. <laughs> Mars. Mars is also known as the red planet. It's more red than a pomegranate. Fourth planet mm -hmm. from the sun, a place where you can't have fun. In conclusion, I enjoy this project very much. Now, this is just a small piece of what my student submitted. And I'm sure he's here viewing us with live Facebook with his family supporting him right now. Shadi, I hope you see that how Seesaw offers a platform for your child and all children to be able to express themselves, their thoughts, their understanding, what are they learning, what are they confused about, what they're not sure about. And here, from what we're seeing for my young student, he was given the opportunity to use play and imagination, plus all the tools that he had at his disposal, all the communication tools from Seesaw, to be able to share and he definitely was able to create something very creative with his finished product. So let's look at what is creativity. Creativity is inspiration. Inspiration provides intrinsic or extrinsic motivation to complete the task. Some students are motivated by the levels of satisfaction gained. 
Others can be inspired by a challenge, a tangible reward, a word of praise. Digital stickers can be posted by the teacher in the student's digital journal for tasks completed. The option to choose a reward from a collection of activities shared in the announcement feature of CISO easily becomes a daily event which students look forward to at the end of a hectic school day. Creating a class photo, even with this remote learning that we now are faced with, becomes an exciting reward after an entire term of hard work and perseverance, something all pupils can put every effort into making sure it comes through. Creativity is modeled by the teacher. To encourage your students to be creative, you too must model your willingness to be creative, to take chances. As the teacher, you must be the transformational leader. Seesaw allows you, the teacher, to model your willingness through the sample student feature. You have the option to choose when you will model your sample. Do you wish to share it before the learners try theirs or while they are late trying? Creativity is open-mindedness. Students have to be encouraged to be willing to try new things, to experiment with the assortment of creative tools, providing video recording, audio recording, capturing by pictures, importing graphics, drawing, sketching. Here I have samples of my learners' work, all designed with the creative tools of CISO. Creativity is taking risks. Learners need to be courageous to take risks. They must be encouraged to stumble, fail, and try again. In CISO, a setting can be enabled where only the teacher can see the student's work. This piece shown here, the student is very shy and very rarely would show herself on camera in our Zoom class. Yet she felt comfortable and brave taking her activity to a new level with her choosing to record a reading of her reading a biblical verse in connection to Valentine's Day. Creativity is nurtured in safety. Rejection by their peers, criticism or indifference may hurt creative minds and creative thoughts may not flow as easily next time. The blog feature in CISO provides a safe environment where students' work can be shared with their peers or given the option to respond by giving feedback through comments. Once the blog is enabled by selecting the globe icon as the teacher, you can enable the feature in your class settings where students can comment on work in the blog. Seashaw ensures the teacher's approval for each and every comment before it's posted. And in the classroom, what role is there for parents, parents who are concerned, parents who are looking on? How can Seesaw ensure that it's a safe space for young learners? Well, just like all of the feedback that the parents have to, that the class teacher has to approve, Seesaw allows parents to be part of Seesaw through the family app. And here parents are provided a space, a forum to share feedback for their child's work. And if the teacher permits for other learners, again, each comment must be approved by the teacher. This is a strength of Seesaw that it encourages this connection, this communication loop with teachers, learners, and caring family members. Creativity is practice. Frequent practice results in an improvement and refinement of skills in a safe environment. Think of an athlete who practices over and over. Seesaw offers the opportunity for students to work on their assigned task and keep it as a draft as they frequently revise, revise, edit, add over long periods of time from days to even weeks. Then the student gets the option to submit for review when they are satisfied with the final product. Students can also submit multiple posts to an activity. This offers the learner the opportunity to be flexible and attempt multiple approaches. And we take good taking a look back at Peter Minchell from Trinidad. In 1996, the Atlanta Olympic Games, Massman Peter Minchel adapted his iconic Tantan and Saga boy, his giant puppets, forming an entire elaborate Atlanta-based family, all giant-sized puppets, once again reversing our understanding of the puppet and the puppeteer. Not content with that adaptation, Minchel took his creativity even further. He designed huge, incredible undulating dancing figures that exaggerated the movement of carnival.
of our teachers and learners, can you imagine how the learner can use the creative tools and safe environment of CISO and as well as parents to represent the swaying movement of these air dancers? I challenge you as a learner, as a teacher, as an administrator, as a, and as a parent to give CISO a try to be able to explore creativity. And what is creativity in summary? Creativity is inventing, experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and most importantly, having fun. Dr. K? Thank you so much, Hazra. I especially like that last one, having fun. And when I saw those images, I was just thinking, wow, this is such a fun party atmosphere. I know that's what Trinidad and Tobago is very famous for. But oh. look at that kind of creativity. I think those... Those uh, puppets are like, what, 10 feet tall, right? And we couldn't even imagine. Now, imagine, the, imagine if we, as teachers, parents, and I don't know how many of you in the, uh, who are here with us are teachers, but we certainly have uh, parents like Shadi here who are very, very involved with their children's education. So whether you're a student, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a parent, administrator, or technologist, we invite you to think about better ways, better ways to engage our young learners. And Hazra, how old was that lovely little child there? Was it Nuruddin? Nuruddin, six years old. I'm six sure that Shadi's daughter's old. age. <laughs> Very good, six years old. I mean, when I saw that little hand and that little helmet, I said, look what we can do where we never thought we could have done in our own homes, in our own living rooms, Put on the helmet, put on the foil, watch the screen and say, Dr. Raman, just uh, hold on. Uh, I think people are facing some problem. Uh, are you able to hear us? Uh, yes, I'm okay. Audible? Because we have got some feedback in the chat box that it is not audible. Okay, it's audible. Okay, fine. Okay, Sorry. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Yes. So again, I, we take up Hazra's challenge to you as parents, teachers, and so on to work and nurture that creative spirit in your child as we move along. So we move right along to the next one. We're gonna have another adventure with Dipnarine with critical thinking. Over to you, Dipnarine. So good morning once again. My good name afternoon. is Mr. Dipnarine. Don't forget it's afternoon in Dubai, right? I know that side of the world, yeah. <laughs> and so I will be looking at the third C, critical thinking. And just to get our creative juice, critical thinking juices flowing, I have a little challenge for us to engage ourselves in this, this afternoon. Great. So was anybody able to figure out which one of the doors should you proceed through? So I'm seeing Pooja saying one, I'm seeing Roseanne saying two, I'm seeing Zabine saying number three, um, and I'm getting some justifications in terms of which one of the doors you would have chosen. So for those who would have chosen, Door number three. Um, one of the reasoning or the reasoning behind choosing choosing number three 
would have been looking at the resources available, which in this case would have been the candle. And then bringing that candle up to each door's keyhole. And if the flame moves, then there's a tunnel behind the door, which means that it would not have been blocked by the, the brick wall. So what do you think would have been some of those skills that you would have used in that room in order to escape? Right, so we can use the chat. Right, so a few persons would have got guess the door number three as the door to exit from. Right, and just looking at the chat, knocking the door, if there's an echo, it's the right door. Right, so what does this have to do with critical thinking? So one, we would have looked at the resources that are avail available, and then based on our observations, our experiences, Right, we will be able to guide ourselves into choosing a correct door. So critical thinking is basically that intellectual discipline process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and or evaluating information gathered from or generated by observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication as a guide to the belief and action. So what are some of the skills and the characteristics um, that critical thinking and critical thinkers possess? According to Paul Elder, 2013, people who possess critical thinking skills raise important questions and problems, expressing them with clarity and precision, collect and evaluate information that is relevant to the situation, interpret information effectively, come to well-reasoned conclusions and solutions, contrast the solution against relevant criteria and standards, think open-mindedly, seven, recognize and assess the assumptions, implications, and practical consequences, and number eight, communicate effectively with others and figure out solutions to complex problems. Did you use any of these skills um, in coming up with a determination in terms of the doors that you would have chosen to exit? All right, so you can use the chat and indicate if you would have used any of these skills in coming up with the door to exit from. So looking at the feedback from the poll that was conducted earlier, um, we are saying that we have 75% of our attendees as being students, and we had 16% being teachers. So for the teachers out there, um, are you familiar with Bloom's taxonomy? Again, let's use the chat. All right, so I'm seeing Zabine saying yes, he's familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, right? So Bloom's taxonomy is basically a, a tool that can be used and is described in different levels of thinking. And again, remember what we are speaking about this afternoon is thinking, um, thinking critically in order to come to some type of judgment at the end of the day. It helps educators develop critical thinking and higher order cognitive abilities in their students. And again, we have 75% of um, our attendees being students. So we will look at very shortly an example of where we utilize um, critical thinking in our everyday lives. Critical thinking basically integrates these two components from Bloom. One, the lower order thinking skills, which is the ability to generate information. And two, your higher order thinking skills. I'm using those skills to basically guide behavior. Thinking critically about a set of facts or other information to make an informed decision requires that a thinker goes through all six cognitive levels as defined by Bloom. So for our teachers there, um, how do we actually engage our students in the classroom to think critically? At the first level of Bloom, we have knowledge which talks about the identification and the recall of information. Some verbs we use in our questions, maybe defining, listing, um, identifying, labeling, naming, and recalling. But when we construct 
question for our students, we can use these guiding questions so as to express, let our students express, um, basically looking at how to encourage them to think critically. So who, what, where, when, how, and describe comprehension um, is the organization and the selection of facts and ideas. We use verbs like convert, describe, explain, restate, retell. And our questions can be worded in a way that again encourages our students to think critically. Retell in your own words. What is the main idea of? What differences exist between? Next level of bloom, the application, the use of facts, rules, and principles. Our verbs may be apply, compute, demonstrate, determine. And now some of our guiding questions may be, how is an example of, how is something related to the net? And do you know the, another instance where something can be used? The fourth level, analysis, is the separation of the whole into components. The verbs like analyze, categorize, contrast, differentiate. And again, wording our questions for our students to think critically, what are the features of? How do you compare and contrast with? Our fifth level, synthesis, combining ideas to form a new whole. Verbs we use in the classroom can be change, combine, compose. But when we want our students to think critically, we structure our questions such as, what would you predict or infer from? What solutions would you suggest for? And again, remember, we want our students to be able to be critical thinkers, to be problem solvers. And our very last level of blooms is eval evaluation. And this basically talks about developing opinions, judgments, or decisions. Verbs are used such as appraise, choose, decide, judge, rate, and select. And our guiding questions in the classroom can be, do you agree with and explain? How would you decide about, etc.? So at this point, I'm going to give you the opportunity to actually think critically about a situation. And um, my colleagues will post a couple links that we will be utilizing in order to submit your answers. So let's look at our second activity. So the world is counting on you. How would you escape? So three links have been placed into the chat, a student link, a teacher link, and a parent link. And each will take you to a tool called Padlet that allows uh, collaboration. And it will allow us to view the, your submissions in terms of your answers. So at this point, we would like you to access those different categories and submit your answers. Because these answers will basically feed into our next um, presenter's presentation. So I'm just going to give one minute for All right. our presentation. Just want to thanks, Deputy. Just want to advise anybody who is not category student, teachers, or parents, here's what. Just choose one and still go into the Padlet because we want your engagement right now. We want you to take part in it. So, Rabab, you choose whichever one you want to go into. Teacher, for example. <laughs> Yeah, I would go for teacher because I had been a teacher in my at some point in my life. So I would go for a teacher. <laughs> good, good.
Okay, so for those of you, uh, the, you have to go into the chat and in the chat there are Padlets and there are the students, teachers or parents. There are three different links, just choose one. And in this 60 seconds, we want you to engage with Padlet. All right, so as you access Padlet, the question will also be posted on the Padlet and instructions of how do you post your answers on today collaborative space. Some more of that Mission Impossible music would be great dip <laughs> <laughs> at this time. <laughs> All right, so that's to refresh your memories on the challenge. Um, I'll replay the video as we um, welcome you to submit on the Padlet. So missing will be looking at those answers on Padlet in our final um, segment, which would be collaboration. So to continue with my presentation, um, for the students that we have joining us this afternoon, um, is anybody familiar with Minecraft? So we can use the chat once more. Um, are you familiar with Minecraft? Yes. Right, I'm seeing quite a few persons saying yes. All right, so Minecraft is one of those tools, um, online tools that facilitates this whole idea of critical thinking, specifically problem solving. So Minecraft Education is an open world game that promotes problem solving, creativity, and collaboration in an immersive environment where the only limit is your imagination. So as an educator or even as a student, if you are looking for a tool that basically helps you in terms of critical thinking or developing your critical thinking skills, um, this is one of the options that is available to you. And what we're gonna look at now is an example of a school in Northern Ireland that is currently using Minecraft in, as part of their curriculum. So let's see what um, they have to say about the usage of Minecraft within their educational district. We've been really excited when Minecraft Education Edition came on the scene because it meant that in the classroom all the children could join the world and they could develop those essential learning skills like collaboration, creativity, critical thinking and problem solving. Teachers and learners have told us about the development of 21st century skills, about the positive impact on both literacy and numeracy skills. When children enjoy what they're doing and are engaged, the barriers to learning are removed. I developed my skills of communication. Instead of just being quiet and doing it by myself, I communicated with everybody around my table and my team. And I absolutely love it whenever the children are engaged and having fun because they're learning and they don't even realize it. They're playing and they're learning and they're extending their knowledge. And it's all in that sandbox environment of Minecraft. They're probably going home and telling their parents that they're playing, but the skills that they learn and the knowledge that they develop is key. All right, so I'm glad that quite a few of us know about Minecraft and the benefits of utilizing Minecraft in the classroom. But another tool that we have available to us is a website called code.org. And again, remember in the theme of today's presentation, looking at those tools that facilitate or help um, in terms of gaining these, um, co these competencies. So code.org, and again, using the chat, you can say if you are familiar with code.org, it's a nonprofit dedicated to expanding access to computer science in schools and increasing participation by young women and students from other unrepresented groups. 
It uses problem solving and creativity to build, to explore, build, and address problems. Uh, Dip, I would like to say something here. Uh, uh -huh. The audience, actually, the time limit was till 4.30 p.m. UA time. But as the session is going on quite engaging and quite industrial, so I hope you guys won't mind staying here for a little more time. Uh, we will not take much of your time, but at least um, the things which are planned uh, has to, uh, should be shared with you all. So I hope you will stay, you will not, you will stay with us uh, till the session ends. That's all. Dip, you can continue. Thank you very much. All right, so um, my final piece here. Um, this is an example of Code.org and some of the founders of Code.org and the benefits of utilizing problem solving in the classroom to facilitate critical thinking. Let's get back to that. I was 13 when I first got access to a, a computer. My parents bought me a, uh, a Macintosh in 1984 when I was eight years old. I was in sixth grade. I learned to code in college. Freshman year, first semester, um, intro to computer science. I wrote a program to play tic-tac-toe. I think it was pretty humble beginnings. I think the first program I wrote asked uh, things like, what's your favorite color? Or how old are you? I first learned how to make a green circle and a red square appear on the screen. The first time I actually had something come up and say, hello world, and it, the, I made a computer do that. It was just astonishing. Learning how to program didn't start off as wanting to learn all of computer science or, um, or trying to master this discipline or anything like that. It just started off because I wanted to do this one simple thing. I wanted to make something that was fun for myself and, and my sisters. And I wrote this little program and then basically just add a little bit to it. And then when I need to learn something new, I looked it up either in a book or on the internet and then added a little bit to it. You don't have to be a genius to know how to code. You need to be determined. Addition, subtraction, uh, that, that's about it. You should probably know your multiplication tables. <laughs> you don't have to be a genius to code. Do you have to be a genius to read? Even if you want to become a race car driver or play baseball, Um, or, uh, you know, build a house. And it, all of these things have been turned upside down by software. What it is is, you know, computers are, are everywhere. You want to work in agriculture? <laughs> Do you want to work in entertainment? Do you want to work in manufacturing? You know, it's, it's just all over. If you're trying to make a lot of money or whether you just want to change the world, computer programming is an incredibly empowering skill to learn. I think if someone had told me that software is really about humanity, that it's really about helping people by using computer technology, it would have changed my outlook a lot earlier. To be able to actually come up with an idea and then see it in your hands and then be able to press a button and have it be in millions of people's hands, uh, I mean, I think we're the first generation in the world that's really ever had that kind of experience. Just to think that I mean, you can start something in you know, your college dorm room and you can have a set of people who haven't built a big company before come together and build something that a billion people use as part of their, their daily lives is, is just crazy to think about, right? It's really, it's humbling and it's amazing. The programmers of tomorrow are the wizards of the future. You know, you're going to look like you have magic powers compared to everybody else. I think it's amazing. It's, I think it's the closest thing we have to a superpower. Great coders are today's rock stars. That's it. So with those closing words, I would like to say um, thank you for the opportunity to present on critical thinking. And I encourage the teachers there and, um, that we have with us this afternoon, and even the students, to start looking at problems and seeing the solutions that you can develop as a person to solve some of these problems that we face today, and by extension, um, some of those problems that we may face in the future. So thank you. Back to you, Dr. K. Oh, thank you so much, Deb. I was just immersed in that Minecraft thing. And then so inspired by these, these people who have really made what our social media come alive. I mean, just to hear Bill and Mark Zuckerberg and, and all the others talk about how easy it is to code. Rabab, we're doing your job, girl. We're getting it out there for you in terms of what does this technology really mean to us? And I think earlier on, Shadi um, 
express some angst really about his children and what they're learning. And as a parent, I know he expressed that. I know we have a lot of students out here and we also have some teachers. Uh, Joelle, are you a teacher? Joelle Dano, and if you are, um, I know you, you are using a lot of technology in your classroom. Was there anything you saw with coding important for you to talk about? Do you want to share with us, Joelle? Joelle. I'm saying Joelle S. Dano. Are you on? Yes, mom. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yes, Joel. I, I see you, you're really engaging with us. And I thought you'd want, I've just given you a 30 seconds to share. If you think code.org or Minecraft or any of those would be helpful in your classroom. Are you a teacher? Oh, yes, mom. Uh, as a teacher, uh, I use the uh, principles of the uh, online gaming so right. that I can, I can get the attention of my students. Because uh, we all know that uh, all the young ones are engaged in online gaming. So to be able to get their attention and motiv motivate them, I use some of the characters, features of the characters, and I put it on my presentation so that they, uh, I can get their attention while I'm teaching. Wonderful. Uh, what age students do you, uh, are you working with? Uh, I'm teaching a junior high school, a grade seven and grade nine. Grade seven and grade nine. Yeah. Wonderful. That's just the age where, you know, they're ticking and raring to go. And in this age of information overload with the internet, uh -huh. the critical thinking C is even more important for us as educators to build in our students so that they're able to sift and make sense and meaning and better use of all the information you have. So all the great work you're doing, Joel, we love what you're doing and we'd love to connect with you after the program to find out, to talk more about what you're doing and how we can support you, all right? Okay, thank you very much, Mom. Wonderful. So now on to our last but not least, where Trisha is gonna tell us what you all put on on those padlets. So over to you, Trisha, as we end up with our last C. <laughs> I we cannot hear you, Trisha. I she's speaking, but we cannot hear her. Are you all hearing now? Yeah, now, now we're hearing you. <laughs> yeah, I hear, okay. okay. Hi, welcome. Good day, everyone. Um, so we're doing collaboration. And like my former presenter, Mr. Dipnarine, just um, shared on critical thinking, right? He gave you a lovely question there. You're on the top floor of the Burj Khalifa and the UFO is quickly approaching, blocking out all sunlight and the building begins to shake violently. How do you escape? Now, these are some of the Padlets that, some of the answers on the Padlet that were here. And some of the student members, they were called for help. One was keep calm and think for a best solution. Panicking won't help you in a critical situation. Some will pray, some will jump. Right. One making friends, they'll tell the UFO, nice to meet you, my lost bro, and then they'll help me. Some hiding under the table, pray before you jump. Jump into the water, try the staircase, use the lift, skydive with a parachute like 007, yes. I talk to the alien and get friends to them and I will ride to their spaceship, right? Lots, lots of answers from the teachers. They'll pray again. One will roll down to avoid being seen by the aliens. And they will run directly to the X to the escape, right? So collaboration. A 
as we all know, collaboration Sorry, one sec. All right, Trisha just had to yes, organize yes, something back, there until she's yes. back. Sorry, yeah. I'm having oh, okay. connectivity issues in my area here. Yeah. Oh, okay, Trisha. Okay. This is a reality, and this is actually what was happening here is a reality for the most of us. Sometimes the internet dips, sometimes the we didn't charge the phone, a couple of things that always happens with this online. But you're yeah, seeing you and hearing you loud and clear, Trisha. Collaboration, right? It's when we work together to achieve a main goal. I'll share my screen just now, just the internet. Just give me two seconds that this internet come up. So collaboration is when we work together to achieve a main goal. There are many, one of the main strengths in collaboration tools is communication. Just like Our first presenter, when they did communication, it's like our first presenter when they did communication, right? We cannot have collaboration unless we can speak with each other. And these are some benefits of collaboration. We achieve a common goal, right? Remember, we have the pyramid. This couldn't be done by one person or one entity. It would have taken a lot more. And recently we had the rover on Mars that a, quite a few teams around the world collaborated to get to this, to get to Mars, right? We have teams from space, the US, Norway, and many other countries participated to get there. We also have Pro Professor Gupta who is controlling the rover from his one bedroom flat above a hairdresser's place in London. So he's not at NASA in Houston, he's in London and he's partly controlling the rover. Okay. Uh, Trish, just to interrupt you, I know you're having problems with the screen on your internet. Active, uh, yes. Do you want someone else to share that screen for you? All right, um, let me see if I could think it's coming up there now. Okay. All right, where's my rover? Because we really want to see that rover on Mars, right? Yes, all right. So I think we're here. Thanks everyone for your patience. Right, wonderful. I think you're there now. So we have collaboration. So we have the rover on Mars. This is the team, part of the well, most of them where they could get the picture from NASA. And we have Professor Gupta controlling from his flat in London. Anybody, anybody knows this Professor Gupta and his flat in uh, South London? I mean, there he is in that nice photograph there, controlling this massive thing that's happening on Mars from his home. I just think that is unbelievable. Yeah. Right? Due, to, due to COVID, yes. due to COVID he, is, he is there and he's unable to get to right. Collaboration. Collaboration makes things happen. Right? We, we build bigger, we go further with collaboration. By the way, before you move up the screen, you want to just go back there, Trish? Um, uh -huh. When you talk about the science team, is it all those people? Yes. Wow. So is it wow. all those people who needed to collaborate to get, to get that it. Mars rover, yep. well, to get that rover on Mars? To get the yes, perseverance, perseverance rover. Yeah, oh my to God, get the that's mind boggling. Honestly, yeah, this, that's this like mind boggling. And I'm sure people are missing from that photo because it takes a lot of work. They've been working on this. Thing. I'm sure. I'm sure you understand that it takes a whole team to get everything done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You need the right people when you're doing it. Okay. Wonderful. So yes. It brings the team closer together right? Collaboration will ensure that your team, your class, your students, even your fellow teachers, if they're working together to make something, to create something, when that happens, the 
benefit, the feeling that they get, that they, you know, they work together to, to bring something to fruition. It, it really builds self-esteem and allows communication to get better. So they're learning from each other. We have cultural strengths, weaknesses. In Trinidad, we are a multicultural society, right? This is our, this is what, this is our backbone. This is what we are known for. We have many religions. We have many ethnic cultures. We have a lot of meshing taking place. We are, one of our watchwords is tolerance, right? So we learn from each other, from each other's cultures, from each other's spiritual beliefs, and we get a lot done here. As seen in our creativity, you saw our carnival, dubbed the greatest show on earth. Right? So learning from each other, we learn each other's strengths, each other's weaknesses, and collaborations allows for that. If I know somebody on my team doesn't like to speak, and I am a good speaker, I would do the speaking while I allow them to write, and they are good writers, and they are good creators, allow them to write my script while I read from it, while I present theirs, right? So we build from each other. We learn our, each other's strengths and weaknesses. We think about things differently. I may be accustomed, you know, doing things a certain way, one way, and never thought about doing it another way. And this is what collaboration does. It makes you see from another person's point of view so that you get things done and you may be more efficient than what you were thinking about, right? One day I asked a four-year-old, how would you build a pyramid? And if I were doing it, I would cut out some triangles. I would start by cutting out some triangles and gluing them together. And he told me, no, he's four years old. He said, I would cut a square. And I'm thinking a square. So I didn't interrupt him. I allowed him to continue. He said, I would cut a square and then I would cut a smaller square. And then I would continue cutting smaller and smaller squares until I make a tip and place them on top of each other. And I will get a pyramid. And I was thinking, okay, this is a four-year-old, and I never thought about building a pyramid like that. So collaboration allows for creativity, right? Critical thinking, and all these things from collaboration. It improves communication. We cannot collaborate unless we could communicate. And that was right. where... So, so Trish, in the interest of time, do you have yes. a lovely collaborative exercise that you can get yes, everybody into to just close this right. up? So we have, together we can, oh wow, yes, yes that, that was the collaboration. And that was so, so an amazing example of collaboration, right. yes. And well, the presentations would be on our website, so you all could see some tools, right, that we can use with collaboration, right, for the instant messaging, for the Zoom, for the online documents, and that's why I want to stress here, the online documents the Google Classroom, right? So we have the question here and we have an escape plan. Now from the Padlet, right? I just wanna take one and put it here. So first step, we would stay calm. I'm taking one of your answers. Can somebody give me a next step? What they would do? Right. When they see that UFO oh. going, so the link is in the chat. Ooh. Please click on the link and you all will be able to edit the same document that you are seeing that I am presenting here. So I would like okay. about... So is it the link that Salma, Salma, yeah, just Salma, the Salma, link. Just, okay. just Salma just okay. shared a link? So please click on that link and you will be taken to this document where you write. So stay calm. We'll focus on problem at hand. So what are, what are we seeing on the screen, Trisha? So these are students and teachers. These are participants in the Zoom. They are typing on the same document and giving some steps to get out of. Oh, okay, wonderful. Right. Okay. So anonymous quagga is these somebody. All right? different, yes, these are all different <laughs> users. If we were right, using right. a learning management system. Anonymous Dumbo. Okay. Yes. I wonder who anonymous is i hope that you can maybe you want to uh come on the screen and or put on your audio and tell us what you're writing anonymous one of you right so you can see here if we were all from the same domain like the google classroom 
um, Joel, I think, was referencing that, one of the participants, yes. right? If you all would same domain using Google Classroom, using the Google um, Education Suite, you all would see the students' names here. Instead of an anonymous Antita, right. anonymous, you would see the student's name popping up. Right? But I, I left this open to the public so that any email address would work. Nice. So this is what you call a collaborative document. It's a Google Doc, right? Yes, this is a Google this Doc, and it's a very easy of, way right, this is one of the features to allow of collaboration. And does it matter which wherever am I, I am in the world that I does can? Doesn't matter as long as you have the link. As long as you have the link, you'll be able to. Participate. So the power of the internet again. Wherever I am in the world, I can come and work on the same document, and we can come up with a full plan. That's what you see, in Trisha. Yes. That's amazing. That's, fine, collaboration. Fine. So that's a collaborative exercise on this bird. This is so amazing. Really amazing. Wonderful. And guess what? You students are just, you know, so brilliant. You're coming up with so many original stuff that even I wouldn't think of this. So I love that. Find the fire exit plan. Exactly. Help people. Help people. This is so amazing. So teachers amongst us, parents amongst us, it doesn't matter if your child is even so it's on whichever position on that spectrum. Once the teacher really engage, there are many, many tools that the teachers can use to engage the children online, wherever they are, whatever the situation. And this is a perfect example of a collaborative tool. So Trisha, just end that off for us. Yeah. Right. So if if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So collaborations allow you to think bigger, build bigger, go further. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Trisha. So there we have it. I just wanted to take, take you back, everyone. This has been a fabulous, nearly two hours. You've stayed with us. It has been amazing. So in the chat, I just want any one volunteer. I just want an answer to one question. Can anyone identify all four C's of 21st century learning for me? Just like any volunteer from the audience, just, just shout it out. Can you please repeat what, you, what are you expecting from the audience? All right. So I'm just asking for any volunteer. Okay, so people are using the chat. That's not a problem. Let's go. Uh, can you list the four C's of 21st century learning that we met today? So I'm here, I'm seeing it. Yes, Roseanne, communication, collaboration, creativity. And I think Mohammed came in there and just took you over with that last one. Uh, oh, and uh, yes, yes. All right, yes. We have a brilliant group here. This is an amazing group. The four C's. 21st century learning is not just about amassing information. It's about being creative. It's about being able to collaborate with others to solve problems. It's being able to think through our problems and be creative and express ourselves in the best way. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, thank you so much, audience. You've been fantastic. I am open two questions um, that the audience may have, Rabab. Uh, for the questions, Vimala, um, I'm afraid that we have already passed the time limit. So it would know. be great if we take questions via email. You can, if you have any questions in your mind regarding the session, you can send us on info at tickxmedia.com and we will get it answered by ITTPN team. You can directly connect with um, all of the speakers through LinkedIn. Uh, for your questions, or you can connect through us for your questions. Uh, and uh, I would like to um, wholeheartedly, I would like to thank all the speakers who have put in so much of effort with all the presentations, all the visual, and um, um, you made this session really interactive, really engaging. We got uh, 130 participants for this webinar, and uh, I'm really glad, I'm really thankful that all of them stayed with us throughout the webinar. Obviously, it was very engaging, very informative. How could they leave it? 
um, I would like to thank everyone for their participation, ITTP and team. Uh, and um, now from TechX side, please get subscribed to TechX uh, website, TechX news website, www.techxmedia.com. The link of which will be shared in the, uh, in the chat box. You can get subscribed. You can um, follow us on our social media pages to, uh, pages to uh, stay updated about what is happening inside the technology industry. And last but not the least, feedback form link will be shared in the chat box now and once you will fill the feedback form we will get your feedback uh, uh, ITTP and team will get your feedback and uh, you will be eligible to get the participation certificate of this webinar uh, thank you everyone um, now you uh, feedback form link is already shared thank you Vimala thank you Trisha thank you Hazra uh, Jeb, Rox, Ayan, Derek, everyone, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you so much, Rabab, and your team. It has been such a pleasure to connect with those of you on the opposite side of the world and to really show the power of the internet to connect, to cross the boundaries of time and space, and for this honest information sharing that we had today. Lots more possibilities, Rabab, for us to collaborate, Definitely. and we'll talk about that. We'll be in touch with each other again. Thank and, you. Yeah, thank you.